Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Hello students, welcome to the second week of this course. In this week, we will be discussing the dynamics of one of the simplest type of dynamical systems which are known as first order systems. So here are the objectives for this particular week. Uh, at the end of this week, you would be able to identify a first order system. You would be able to state the significance of two main parameters of a first order system which are gain and time constant. And lastly, you would be able to predict how a first order this system responds to different types of disturbances. So let us get started. So a first order system is a dynamical system. whose dynamics are given by a first order differential equation. So, which will be of typically of a form, if my output is y, then I can write a1 dy by dt plus a0y is equal to b times f of t. So, this is a general form of a first order dynamic system where we can say y is my output. of the system f of t is known as a forcing function or input and we have these three constants a1, a0 and b are the constants. Now out of these constants we have to ensure that a1 is not equal to 0 because you can see that if a1 is equal to 0 then automatically this derivative goes away and you do not have any dynamical system all you have is an algebraic system. So it automatically violates the definition of first order dynamic system. So any first order dynamic system you have to ensure that the coefficient of the first derivative is always non-zero these other coefficients can be 0. So let us look at how do we can simplify the representation. So the representation can be there are two types of first order systems depending on the value of this other coefficient a0. So if a0 is not equal to 0 then I can divide the equation by a0 throughout and what I will have is a1 over a0 dy by dt plus y is equal to b over a0 times f of t which we can also write as tau times dy by dt plus y is equal to kp times f of t. So this is a standard form in which a first order dynamical system is written. and we call or we represent it by two parameters one is tau which is known as a time constant and the other parameter is kp which is known as process gain. 
we will see the significance of this as we move along into this lecture. So, any first order system where A0 is not equal to 0, we have two parameters which describe the system, one is time constant and other is the process gain. Now, let us see what would happen if A0 is indeed equal to 0. So, if A0 is equal to 0, what you end up having is A1 dy by dt is equal to b times f of t and this type of system we call it as a purely capacitive process. So, in this case we can simply write dy by dt is equal to b over a1 times f of t and we represent it as dy by dt is equal to kp times f of t. So, it has only one parameter which is gain. So, in the previous lecture, I told you that uh, irrespective of the way in which we develop the dynamic model, uh, the analysis we typically try to cover in Laplace domain. So, in both the cases, we will try the, to take the Laplace transform of the equation and then try to find out how the relationship between input and output it is represented as a transfer function. So, for the first case when A0 is not equal to 0, the dynamic equation we got was tau times dy by dt plus y is equal to kp times f of t. So, we will take a Laplace transform of this. So, the Laplace transform of dy by dt is equal to S times the Laplace of y minus the initial value and uh, we would see that typically when we write the dynamic equation or dynamic model of a process, we generally write it in a deviation form. which means the variable y of t represents deviation of output from the steady state. So, as we write the dynamic model as a deviation from a steady state and we typically assume that at t equal to 0 or any time which is at or before 0, we are at steady state. So, this assumption automatically helps us to get y0 is equal to 0 and this when plugged in here, we have removed this variable from the equation. So, that is the whole motivation of uh, writing uh, the equation in a deviation form because then automatically this initial value gets cancelled or removed from the Laplace transform. So, when we try to write the Laplace transform of that original equation, what we get is tau times the Laplace of derivative which is s times y s minus y 0 which we just said is equal to 0 plus the Laplace of y which is y s is equal to k p times the Laplace of f. So, we can simplify this and write down the ratio of y s over f s which is the Laplace transform of output over the Laplace transform of input. We get it 
to be equal to K P over tau s plus one. So this is the transfer function. for first order process which again has the two parameters which we had earlier listed the gain and the time constant. So this transfer function gives a relationship between the how the if I have a change in the input that transfer function will multiply this transfer function to get the transfer uh, Laplace form of the output. So, my y s will be equal to k p over tau s plus 1 times the Laplace transform of input. So, depending on what input we have whether it is a step change or a sinusoidal input, we can take a Laplace transform of the input multiply it by this transfer function and we will get the Laplace of output which eventually will have to be inverted to get the time domain response of the output. So, let us now look at the Laplace transform of a purely capacitive process. So, if A0 is equal to 0, we had dy by dt is equal to kp times f of t. So, we take a Laplace transform and what we will get is s times y s minus y0 which is equal to 0 is equal to k p times f of s. So, y s over f s is k p over s. So, this is the transfer function for a purely capacitive process. So, let us take different examples of first order systems. So, the first example uh, we would consider uh, is uh, again a familiar example uh, liquid surge tank. So, let us consider a liquid surge tank where we have some fluid coming in and some fluid going out and then the height inside the tank is the variable of interest. And we have already written down the dynamic model for this system in the previous lecture which was A times dH over dt is equal to F in minus F out. So, now when we write uh, this system into a deviation form, we need to define deviation variables. So, we will be defining deviation variables as departure from steady state and we represent them y assign tilde on top. So, deviation in height will be instantaneous height minus the steady state height and similarly deviation in input flow will be f in minus f in till steady state and f out will be f out t minus f out steady state. So, our original equation was A dH over dt is equal to f in minus f out and we can write a similar equation. This equation is also valid for the steady state. So, we can write A times dHSS over dt is equal to f in steady state minus f out steady state. And then we can subtract equation 2 from equation 1. So, we get A d d t of h minus h s s. So, we get the deviation variable h tilde 
is equal to f in minus f in s s so we have deviation in f in minus f out minus f out steady state so deviation in f out so this is our dynamic equation for this simple liquid surge tank in deviation form and now that we have this equation in deviation form we can take a laplace transform of this equation so laplace transform of this equation will give me a times s h of s minus h of 0 which is a deviation in height at time t equal to 0 which the assumption that at time t equal to 0 we are already at a steady state so this initial value will be equal to 0 is equal to laplace transform of f in and laplace transform of f out so finally writing this as a final transfer function equation what we have is h tilde s h t is equal to 1 over as times f in s minus 1 over as times f out s so what we see is there are two inputs into this system one is f in other is f out and correspondingly we have two transfer functions so this is our transfer function 1 this is our transfer function 2 so there are two inputs and there is one transfer function each for the relationship between one input to the output and other input to the output and we can write hs is equal to g1s times fn tilde s plus g2s times f out tilde s where g1 is equal to 1 over as and g2 is equal to minus 1 over as so we can see or we can see that the transfer functions which we have obtained between the two inputs and the output uh, they both are of the form kp so these are of the form kp over s with kp is equal to 1 over a and here again it is kp over s with kp being minus 1 over a so both these transfer functions are purely capacitive and it is a indeed a first order system of which is purely capacitive and then the gains of the two inputs are equal but opposite in direction so it tells me that uh, the rate at which change in input uh, the input will cause is exactly same as the way in which the output will cause a change only thing will be the magnitude will be different if my input increases uh, and the output increases in the case of f in then uh, if for the f out if f out increases the height will reduce and that automatically comes from the signs of the gain that they are exactly opposite of each other so this is a first order system and we get a purely two purely capacitive first order systems which are parallel to each other and together they give the change in the height so let us improve upon this process or try to take more vari variants of a liquid surge tank so the second example which we are going to consider is a liquid surge tank with linear valve so what we are going to do is the input remains the same but instead of a simple output what we have is a valve at the output 
and we will have certain level in the tank. The dynamic equation remains the same A times dH over dt is equal to F in minus F out. But now as we have a wall there, my F out also depends on how much material is there inside the tank. So let us try to say if there was a lot of material inside this tank, in that case uh, the hydrostatic head is much higher at the upstream of the wall. So there will be more flow through the wall. If the level inside the tank is very low, then there will be less driving force for the liquid to flow and therefore the outlet flow rate will be less. So your outlet flow rate is proportional to height and we can say that F out is equal to H over R where R is the resistance of the valve. So if we substitute this a dynamic equation which we had also seen in the last week is dh over dt is equal to f in minus h over r. So we can see that it is a first order dynamic equation. We are still yet not uh, written it in a deviation form but even in this current form you can see that it is a first order dynamic equation so this will be a first order process. So when we write it as a deviation form, we define similar deviation variable as H tilde being H minus HSS and F in tilde being F in minus F in SSS steady state and then the same equation is valid at steady state as well. So we will have A DHS over DT is equal to F in SS minus HSS over R and we subtract this equation from the previous equation to get A dH tilde over dt is equal to F in tilde minus H tilde over R which we can also write as AR dH tilde over dt plus H tilde is equal to R F in tilde. So this is of the form tau dy by dt plus y is equal to kp f of t. So by a comparison between these two equations, we can say that tau is equal to ar in this case and kp is equal to r. So this is the first order dynamic system where we have the time constant tau as equal to A times R and then the process gain is given by the resistance of the wall which is R. Let us now move forward with the same example but moving more closer to reality and which is the case of nonlinear dependence of outlet flow rate on height. In the previous lecture we had seen uh, that uh, even though we had assumed a linear relationship between height and flow rate, uh, the actual relationship is a square root relationship because flow is proportional to square root of the pressure and therefore square root of the height and uh, we typically have F out is equal to alpha times root H. So what we can write here is uh, the equation becomes A dH over dt is equal to F in minus alpha root H. So this looks like a first order system uh, but uh, there is a small problem here uh, that uh, we have a nonlinear term. So this is not a 
linear equation which uh, we can take a Laplace transform of. So, the first thing we need to do is to convert this nonlinear system into a linear system and that we do by something known as a linearization. So, we will be approximating this system uh, by a linear equivalent and then we will continue the analysis on that linearized version and make an assumption that uh, the system uh, the disturbance or the validity of the system or the analysis is uh, there as long as uh, this assumption of linearity holds. So, we will take a short break here and after the break we will look at how do we linearize this nonlinear system. Thank you.